Hello. Thanks for having me here. Now we'll learn how Keanu Reeves mastered self-irony. Here's the answer. Yeah. Us being here is humorously ironic. When he made every gamer fall in love with him. Yeah. <laughs> And what the hell happened with the fourth Matrix? Well, this has been an unfortunate turn of events. Keanu is about to turn 60, but this does not prevent him from punching and kicking hundreds of stuntmen, entertaining even the youngest audience, and raising the bar of his incredibleness to a new level. I'm uh, Keanu Reeves, and I'm here for... Life is movement, the destination. It's how you get there that counts. Movie's the last thing we care about. Just want some background noise, a little blood, gore, that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to 2019, which began with another John Wick film, the story of an ex-hitman who went to take revenge on robbers who killed his dog. In the process, he turns into an entertaining weapon of mass destruction. As the actor declares, the inspiration for filming the third movie came to him in a dream. Yes, yes, I had a vision after chapter two that I saw John Wick in a suit walking in the desert. And I shared that with the director Chad Stahelski, and he went, that's a good idea. Some projects in Hollywood wait for the green light for decades. But Keanu's dream convinced Lionsgate to allocate $75 million for filming the third part of John Wick in just a minute. I've never been to the Sahara, but to go there, what a magical, amazing, profound place. The script was entrusted to the irreplaceable author, Derek Kolstad, who created a fantastic world of killers, hotels, and gold coins. Derek did not limit himself to the scene in the desert and expanded the number of locations to an unprecedented scale. Wick seems to have made it his goal to whack someone in every corner of the world in this installment. Reeves spent more than four months preparing and rehearsing kicks, jumps, falls, and shots, as well as chases on motorcycles and horses. Chad Stileski has been working with Keanu since the first Matrix, so he's always looking for new challenges for the actor. And that was, uh, next level. But Holly Berry, who played Sophia, a cold-blooded hitman, John's friend, and avid dog lover, noted that she never trained so much for a role. During the course, the actress even broke three ribs. I broke three ribs. What? The film when I was rehearsing for John Wick. Chad hates when I bring this up. I, I thought I was going to get recast in that very moment, and I thought, fuck. No. I'm out of the movie. They're gonna replace me because, you know, the show has to go on. But to Chad's credit, he he waited for me. The experience of using a weapon and interacting with four-legged actors was also new for Holly. She started training courses half a year before the filming began. Dog trainer Andrew Simpson, who previously taught dire wolves for Game of Thrones, helped her tame the beasts. According to the plot, Sophia definitely manages two Belgian Melanoise. Yes, yes, I was also sure that they were German Shepherds, but no. This is a separate breed usually used for police service. We see only two dogs in the frame, but on the set, they had to deal with five Melanois at once. While Holly Berry was cuddling with the doggies, Jerome Flynn prepared his groin area for them. Yeah, that's gonna be a near experience for me. Fortunately, Malinois are very trainable and chose not to method act in this scene. Fantastic. And John's new dog became the crew's favorite pet on the set. Maybe because his brutal attack looked like this. Is that the dog? He likes you. Oh, me? I'm more of a cat person myself. Mark Dacascos played a cat person, a skilled cook, and deadly hitman zero. His character deceives expectation by turning bloody battles into funny sketches. Mark learned about his part's significance only a few days before the shooting began, so he built the image on personal traits. For example, the fact that Zero is fanatical about John directly refers to Mark's confession that he is fascinated by Reeves' talent. I gotta tell you, I'm a huge fan. John Wick. 
Keanu replied that Mark's professionalism and incomparable combat skills pushed him to work even harder in the battle scenes. The result of mutual respect is most clearly visible in the fight in the glass room. Keanu and Mark filmed in it for more than a month. The construction of such an extravagant location cost $4 million. Chad Stileski designed this scene without CGI. This forced cinematographers and stunt directors to think through every shot and every camera angle in detail, which added complexity to the already incredibly tangled fight choreography. The sheer number of professionally rehearsed and recreated fights in the film is also impressive. In the first episode, Keanu beats Boban Mojanovic so hard that I think Anthony Davis feels avenged. The scene is fascinating, but it turns out to be only a prologue to the episode in the weapons workshop. Fleeing from the pursuit, John stumbles upon a showcase of old revolvers from the 19th century, and assembles the one and only. This scene references the movie The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, where Eli Wallach's character assembles a revolver to his taste from many others. The scene is also notable for the elaborate choreography and the impressive number of various weapons, which, piece by piece, move from the store shelves to the bodies of the pagans with whom John fights. Connoisseurs will not be indifferent to the variety of objects flying back. These episodes are mesmerizing and can be used as a substitute for adrenaline during reanimation. Still, someone threw a fly in the ointment, where ointment stands for the first class action and fly stands for the 90s B movie vibe. Maybe it's an homage to Arnie and Sylvester's golden era, but John and Sophia's enemies in the Casablanca scene help to kill themselves. There is a saying don't bring a knife to a gunfight. So the bad guys miss the point of that saying and rush at the shooters with their bare hands. The bad guys must have missed the memo on that one. Some guys appear as if straight out of a video game, biding their time on a loop in their idle animations. These Street Fighter-esque villains are desperately waiting for their turn of demise. And with Sophia at his side, John enters the scene like a rock star, racking up his number of victims with flair and finesse. By the way, during the duration of the film, John single-handedly killed 90 people, but considering their lack of equipment and zero motivation for life, there could have been more. Yeah. The epic self-slaughter in Casablanca goes into the delirium through which the third film exists. The scene is in the Sahara Desert. Here, John Wick is so cool that it seems he tries to fist fight the heat, but the main character loses his will to live in the next few minutes. However, John's motivation in the two previous films was to survive to preserve the memories of his wife. Foolishness was hinted at even during the promotional tour of this picture. Even tonight, you are more suitably dressed for walking through the Sahara. Because, like, lace-up shoes aren't a good idea for no, a sad dude. I know, but it's John Wick. <laughs> but it's John Wick. An argument with which Keanu knocks out questions about logic. And judging by the fact that the third part exceeds the previous one's success, the audience is satisfied with it. Oh, oh, oh. oh John fucking Wick. The film was released on the big screens on May 2019 and received mixed reviews, dividing critics. Some admired John's berserker walks through enemies, others were indignant, but to each his own. I hope that the sequel, which is expected in 2023, will not make the viewer ask too many questions about what will captivate and immerse us in the adrenaline-fueled adventures of John Wick. You ready, John? Yeah.
Hello, sorry for interruption. I am Yevgen, Kolokino channel creator, and I am here to ask you to support Ukraine. I know that news about our fights and struggles are not so entertaining anymore, but we are taking this battle for almost a year right now, and we need your support like never before. You can spread the news about Ukraine in your social media, or you can help us financially. Please, use this QR code or choose any charity fund that you trust and help us. We need that, seriously. Thank you for your time and sorry for interruption again. I will hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Throughout 2019, Keanu seemed to be just having fun and fooling around. At first, he made a surprise appearance in the romantic comedy You Are My Doubt, where his cameo was the film's highlight. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Reeves played himself, but bizarre and exaggerated, mocking the whims of the rich and the stars. The man who embraces his mediocre nothingness shines greater than any. Thank you, Keanu. Therefore, it will be more accurate to say that Keanu Reeves gave his name to a fictional character because the actor was never noticed in this attitude towards others. Hi. Hi. I'm, uh... Keanu Reeves, and I'm here for Between Two Ferns. Oh. And all the internet and tabloid criticism of Reeves was multiplied infinitely by Zach Galifianakis. Hi, my name is Zach Galifianakis. Welcome to another edition of Between Two Ferns. Uh, my guest today is Keanu Reeves. In the movie Between Two Ferns, Keanu listens to a dozen inventive insults and demonstrates a high level of self-irony. Do you research your roles? Yeah. Have you ever considered uh, researching a character that has taken acting classes? Right now I'm acting like this is fun. Reeves continued to ramble on and on. He voiced Duke Kaboom, a comedic yet touching character in the fourth and final installment of the Toy Story animated film. Duke Kaboom, Canada's greatest stuntman. Oh yeah. Ha. Ha. Yes. Huh? He's posing. Ha. Ha ha. Yes. Yes. No. The actor developed a special connection with Duke which Reeves has reportedly admitted in interviews. And I don't know what it was, but I instantly connected to Duke Kaboom. That doesn't make any sense. It turns out that Keanu decided to play himself again, but this time disguised in CGI. I'm Duke Kaboom. Oh man, I can do this. By the way, the pose the toy constantly repeats is also a gift to Duke from Keanu. Once, while working on a role, the actor jumped on the table and began to wriggle. This plasticity was later reflected in character. Duke, Duke, we need Hold to- Hold on, one more. Oh yeah, what brings you back, people? Interestingly, when the image of Kaboom finally did appear on the silver screen, it was actually his second time. Observant viewers could spot Duke in Jack-Jack's crib in the second installment of The Incredibles. Kaboom was an Easter egg and appeared there only for a few seconds. However, the character's sad story has nothing to do with his stay in Jack-Jack's crib. Duke Kaboom is a toy from the 70s, whose happy existence was ruined by lying television commercials and spoiled children. Because if I had been given such a toy as a child, I would most likely be a motorcyclist myself. No. Keanu conveyed the tragedy of Duke Kaboom and made this, at first glance, comedic image profound. Uh. Kaboom. Kaboom! Hey! Do you like our work? Let us know with your like and comment. Push that subscribe button and share with your friends. If you want to support the project financially, become our sponsor on Patreon or YouTube sponsorship. Thank you. Let's move on. Reeves' next appearance would also be uplifting. Hello. Who are you? I am a simple tumbleweed. Call me Sage. Sage. Hey, Sage. The character played a wise teacher for SpongeBob and his friend Patrick in the animated feature film SpongeBob, Sponge on the Run. Are you inside our minds right now? Yes, Patrick. Wow! It seems that Keanu just wanted a little fun and to give us a reason to laugh along the way. Unfortunately, the animated feature skipped theaters and had an immediate release to streaming platform Paramount Plus in the US and Netflix for everyone else. I can imagine the studios were disappointed in the lackluster streaming sales. With a box office of $5,000, this perfectly demonstrates the state of the film industry during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh -oh. He sounds bad. Good luck. After so many funny, frivolous, and even goofy roles, it was time to stop. So you would think. But not for Keanu. In 2020, after a break of almost 30 years, he would once again return to his youth as Theodore Logan. No way! Yes, 
way. The role of Ted is a key moment in Keanu's career, which I've already talked about. The success of the first films about two time-traveling schoolboys led to an absolute explosion of popularity. Bill and Ted became the heroes of animated series, video games, and they were immortalized with plastic figures. Their portraits were even placed on cereal boxes, which only the most devoted fans would have for their collections. The breakfast cereal? <laughs> How, where did you get that? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Cinnamon oat squares and marshmallow notes. That sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah, please don't eat that. Please, we <laughs> yeah. care about you. It's vintage, yeah, I will not, not eat it. For over a decade, Reeves, Winter, and screenwriter Chris Matson pitched the third film to movie moguls but to no avail as no one believed in the sequel's success. What were you guys even thinking? Bill and Ted were never famous outside of the United States, and the teenagers who went crazy for it were already over 40 years old now. <gasps> Nevertheless, Reeves would publicly state that he had dreamt of returning to the role of Ted. Party on, dudes. The fans heard, and sponsors were found after several years of petitions and noise on social networks. Oh, that, that is, is such a relief. relief filming began in 2019. Keanu and Winter's paths diverged significantly after the filming of the original series. Reeves would continue to conquer Hollywood with his acting, and would achieve a lister status within the business, Yeah. while Alex Winter would found Trooper Production Studio, and would later go on to create documentaries. Because so many years had passed since Winter last appeared on the silver screen, he humbly decided to take acting classes to keep up with his friend and colleague. Yeah. In the new story, the friends must save the world again by performing a song that still doesn't exist. <laughs> They're given 77 minutes to solve this task. At this point, precisely 77 minutes remain until the film's end. Since George Carlin died in 2008, the character's daughter communicates with the heroes instead of Rufus. You're Rufus's daughter! I am, and I've been wanting to meet you my whole life. It must be very disappointing. Not at all. Carlin's character is repeatedly mentioned in the movie, thus paying him respect, as though briefly bringing him back to life. Rufus. Greetings, my excellent friend. This series about time travel makes you feel like you're actually going into the past. It starts with Missy, who has changed her status so frequently that the heroes are seriously confused. First, she was our babysitter when we were 10. Then we both invited her to the prom. Two years later, she married my dad. And Missy became mom. After divorcing Bill's dad, she married my dad and became my mom. And now she's marrying Ted's little brother, Officer Deacon Logan. The film ends with many tiny details for ardent fans like the style of Bill's daughter's Thea shirt. The colors and styling are reminiscent of Ted's shirt from the first movie. The entire film is filled with Easter eggs like these and a wave of nostalgia and charm reminiscent of the early 90s. Honestly, I wouldn't have thought we had it in us. Ah, uh, what you do? In addition, in the film, you can see Kid Cudi playing Kid Cudi. Time travel stories like these never seem to go out of date, and the crazier they are, the better. Maybe one day, Johnny Silverhand will come to the set of Bill and Ted in 89 and say, You're starting to remind me of me, 50 years back, minus the charisma. Excellent! <laughs> in 2020, Keanu tested himself in a new genre of modern art. Cyberpunk 2077 was an ambitious video game from the Polish studio CD Projekt Red, which gained recognition for their Witcher game series. The company created unprecedented hype around its new project and added to the army of Geralt of Rivia fans. With Cyberpunk 2077, a new crowd of fans of Chrome, Neon, and cybernetic implants would emerge. Can we find whoever did this? I need to shake their hand. The insane project was inspired by the board game Cyberpunk 2020 by Michael Potsmith, which the artist created back in the 90s. Back then, Michael thought of our time as a far future in which, after a great war, the world began to be ruled by corporations. Yep, goddamn right. Let's not engage in any comparisons and return to the game. CD Projekt Red had been developing cyberpunk since 2012. Even before the game had a plot, the studio executives fed the audience with promises of something wholly new and extraordinary. They continued to garner hype for the game at every opportunity. At the game's presentation in 2018, they showed a teaser that raised the level of anticipation to the moon, a non-linear plot and the ability to create characters from scratch. 
players would be able to choose their character's background, which would affect the whole story. Add to that a slew of small features that would set Cyberpunk 2077 apart from any other franchise in the medium. Sounds good, but what does it really mean? After the pretentious presentation, creative director Sebastian Stepien, responsible for the scripts of the first and second Witcher, left the project. In the following year, the genre would be quietly changed in the game's description. This once non-linear RPG would now be altered to an action RPG without any further explanation. However, this upset would soon be stifled by its next big presentation in 2019, where a new trailer featuring Keanu Reeves would appear on the screen. Please welcome Keanu Reeves. The actor did not just get a cameo in the game, but played the main character, Johnny Silverhand, a keen fighter against corporations and a real rock star. Is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. For the transformation, Keanu again used the motion capture technology he was acquainted with while filming The Matrix. By the way, the developers paid tribute to this film's trilogy and in one of the missions even recreated the fight between Morpheus and the agent frame by frame. I'm sure it is. Keanu himself gave his hero not only appearance, movements, and facial expressions, but also the most significant number of lines among all heroes, except for the player himself. His appearance are full of black humor, catchphrases, nihilistic nonsense, and touching episodes. You're a dick, you know. Maybe we'll fit together after all. Also, in Cyberpunk, Reeve starred in probably the most explicit sex scene of his career. But all this could not help the success of Cyberpunk 2077. Keanu, like thousands of deceived fans, was lured into the world of Cyberpunk by the incredible 2018 presentation. But man proposes, God disposes. Immediately after the release, fan criticism would destroy Cyberpunk 2077. After all the promises, players would be left with another open-world genre clone, in which your choices affect nothing. The initial release of Cyberpunk 2077 was riddled with game-breaking bugs and glitches that made it near impossible to enjoy. To their own, Johnny. That's what peeps with bad taste always say. Cyberpunk was deservedly called the disappointment of the year. But Keanu's acting would not lead to a Razzie for this one. However, it should be noted that the developers fixed the lion's share of errors over the next two years, although few people were interested in this. Still a big step forward. Despite the failure, Keanu continued to immerse himself in the world of video games. No, I'm not talking about a cheap attempt to cash in on the John Wick franchise. In this game, Keanu, fortunately, did not have time to take part. Oh, that, that is, is such a relief. In 2021, the actor joined another game project. In partnership with Warner Brothers, Epic Games presented a game engine that allows you to simulate entire metropolises. Of course, the topic for such a display was chosen appropriately. The Matrix has become more relevant than ever. In addition, this demonstration with Keanu and Carrie Ann Moss worked well for the upcoming screening of the unexpected continuation of the cult trilogy, The Matrix Resurrections. The news about another chapter in the story of Neo and Trinity caused awe and nostalgia among millions of Matrix fans. I'm living inside a computer-generated reality that has imprisoned me. Again. <laughs> and Warner Brothers was counting on this. Millions who witness Zion's victory in their 20s will immediately put on black raincoats and glasses, load up on popcorn, and rush to the premiere to remember the times of their youth. Although even the most devoted fans immediately started to look for a catch because The Matrix is a complete story. The main character died. No. No, 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 whoa, no. whoa, what do you mean, no? Whoops, spoiler alert. What? Honestly, I'm not ashamed. Take offense at the fact that there was an escape in Shawshank Redemption, or say that you haven't heard of the Titanic's door theory. Stay on it! Stay on, Rose! Jack. How there wasn't enough space for Jack? Well, this is all another story. In short, the main characters died, people and machines somehow reconciled, Oracle mumbled something about the sun. Happy end. The war is over! And here is not just some new story in the movie universe, but a sequel where there will be Neo and Trinity. Do you also doubt that something will come out of this? Yeah. 
But the fact that Keanu and Carrie Ann Moss agreed to participate gave hope that a miracle might happen. Looking ahead, here's another spoiler for you. No miracle occurred. Why? The screenplay was written by Lana Wachowski, Davy Mitchell, and Alexander Hammond. And this is where the catches began to appear. Lana's co-writer was not Lily, her sister, as was the case in all of the previous parts, but Davy Mitchell and Alexander Hammond, who do not have a single successful film to their credit. And to be completely honest, they don't have enough credits at all. After some brainstorming, we can speculate that the script was intriguing because it helped Lana lore Reeves, Moss, and investors into her movie. And then, the whispers of doubt turned into a roar of disappointment. Making a film is like clockwork. To get a high quality product, you need every detail to be original and in its place. But what do we get if we replace the mechanisms and gears with cheaper ones? It'll no longer be original, but a fake. This is how The Matrix Resurrections became such a fake. A new team of costume designers, makeup artists, stunt directors, cinematographers, and even editors. And all of these gears and mechanisms are less professional and qualified. This is not only contempt for the people who helped create a masterpiece, but also, in some sense, a scam. I'm sorry about this. In addition to Keanu and Carrie Ann, the cast was joined by Jonathan Groff, who played Agent Smith. Mr. Anderson! Yaya Abdul Mateen II, who replaced Morpheus. I know exactly what you need. <laughs> and Neil Patrick Harris, who was prevented from showing his talent in the role of mysterious psychologist by a lack of musical numbers. How dramatic. Of course, this is not the entire acting ensemble, but even after such an odd brief list, we can doubt the professional abilities of the casting director. Likewise, studios skimp on projects when they're unsure of the potential of sequels and try to tighten their belts to guarantee profit at the box office. Oh, no. I don't know if Lana Wachowski knew it, but she failed to create a Rolex. Instead of an expensive Swiss watch, she gave us a fake one bought from a street swindler. I won't get into a detailed comparison of the trilogy and the new part. Thousands of angry critics have already done it before me. Let's just put the fights against the Merovingian minions from the second and fourth parts side by side. This isn't happening. It's in my mind. It's in my mind. The release of the fourth Matrix was delayed due to the pandemic, and the premiere took place on December 2021. The film was drowned in harsh reviews, and given the above, this is not surprising. Yeah, we kept some kids entertained. So worth it. <laughs> but let's not talk about the sad things. Even though Keanu has not been making the best films in his career lately, there is reason to be happy for him. After many years of solitude, he finally appeared in public with his girlfriend, writer Alexandra Grant. In 2011, Reeves presented his first book with her, and now they pose together on red carpets. And it seems he's no longer the sad Keanu on the bench. Well, isn't that great news? This is the best thing I've done in a long time. In the summer of 2022, the cartoon DC League of Super Pets was released in cinemas, where Keanu voiced Batman. So, you are a dog. I am the Batman. This cartoon is perfect for cozy family viewing, combining non-trivial humor and exciting plot and charming animation. The charismatic voices of Kevin Hart, Dwayne Johnson, and a dozen other famous Hollywood celebrities will not leave any young and adult viewer without a smile. It's true. Keanu is also preparing for a promotional tour for the fourth installment of John Wick. There are already rumors about the fifth installment of the franchise. I'm going to need a gun. If this is not enough, Reeves delighted his most loyal fans by returning to the role of John Constantine. We are waiting for a new chapter of the Demon Hunter's adventures next year. Also, Keanu will return to the bug-fixed world of cyberpunk, where he will share the motion capture stage with Idris Elba. Oh, that's too good. It seems that you can finally rest easy for Keanu Reeves. Maybe right now, the time will come when his life will be filled with the brightest colors, which he deserves more than anyone else. Oh, that is such a relief. <laughs>